The 1990s were a golden age for regional air travel, catapulting underdogs like Embraer and Bombardier to star status with their innovative jets. Amidst this wave, the Japanese, with their long-standing ambition in aviation, saw an opportunity to carve out their niche. The regional jet dream was audacious, yet not outlandishly so. It wasn't a money pit. The void left by Boeing and Airbus was an added advantage. Why? Many Japanese firms were intertwined with them, making a squabble highly undesirable. By 2002, Japan's government catalyzed the vision with a research initiative. In this national aviation showdown, the crown jewel, the contract, landed with MHI, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. To the layperson, they're the car guys. But peek beneath the surface and you'll find a behemoth with tentacles stretching from air conditioners to submarines and even rockets. Their prowess in aviation isn't to be underestimated. They've worn many hats, from producing aircraft to other licenses to rubbing shoulders as primary contractors for aviation titans. With such a legacy, why wouldn't they craft their own bird of the skies? Their aim? A compact aircraft for 50, rivaling the likes of Embraer ERJ and Bombardier CRJ. In the world of aviation, sometimes it's not just about size but design finesse. Picture this, a cabin tailored for snugness, squeezing in four seats a row. Now, instead of the usual bottom storage, the luggage was ingeniously nestled in the tail, granting the fuselage a sleeker, more aerodynamic shape. Unlike the vintage birds with T-tails and rear engines, this modern marvel looked to the future, drawing inspiration from the larger planes that flexed engines beneath their wings, a nod to the contemporary Embraer E-Jet series in development. Driven, perhaps, by the winds of economic change and design ingenuity, the seating capacity surged to fit 70 to 90 passengers, much akin to the E-Jet E-170 and E-175 models. Then, in 2007, at the glamorous Paris Air Show, the curtain lifted, introducing the world to the MRJ, Mitsubishi Regional Jet. This was not just any plane, it was the epitome of futuristic aviation. Lavish cabins, cutting-edge electronics, revolutionary design solutions, and a jaw-dropping 20% slash in fuel consumption. Its airframe, crafted predominantly from avant-garde composite materials. Remember, this was 2007, and even the Boeing 787 hadn't graced the skies. Back home, the MRJ wasn't just a jet, it was Japan's aviation dream. Marking a significant milestone, it was the largest civilian aircraft the nation had crafted since World War II. While its ancestor, the NAMC YS-11, a 64-seater from the 60s and 70s, didn't exactly set the world ablaze, the MRJ aimed to propel Japan into the aviation big league. All Nippon Airways led the charge, being the first to sign on. Following this, the Mitsubishi Aircraft Corporation sprang into action with the majestic vision carrying a whopping price tag of around $1.3 billion. Welcome to the future of aviation. Picture a magnificent duo gracing the skies, the dynamic MRJ siblings, the sprightly MRJ-70 and the robust MRJ-90. The MRJ-90, stretching an impressive 35.8 meters, 117 feet, flaunted a wingspan that spanned nearly a basketball court at 29.2 meters, 95 feet. Its design closely mirrored Embraer's E-Jets, but with a slick twist, its cargo stowed neatly in the tail, granting it a leaner, elongated silhouette. It promised to comfortably ferry up to 88 passengers in a single class, or 81 if you opted for a touch more luxury. And talk about variety. Different MRJ-90 iterations promised journeys ranging from a Seattle to Los Angeles hop to a New York to Los Angeles cruise. Now, introducing the younger sibling, MRJ-70. A tad shorter at 33.4 meters, 109 feet, but with its own charisma. It beckoned with seating for 76 passengers in standard configuration, or a cozier 69 in two class, and it too showcased its range versatility, promising various journey lengths. Step inside, and the cockpit was akin to a sci-fi command center. Yet, a nod to tradition, and perhaps a nod to their friends at Boeing, remained. Classic yokes took center stage over modern side sticks. There were even whispers of aligning the cockpit design with Boeing 787, but that ambitious dream was eventually shelved. Choosing the heart of the aircraft, the engine, wasn't a straightforward affair. Suitors like Rolls-Royce, General Electric, and Pratt & Whitney vied for the honor. 
Ultimately, Pratt & Whitney's fledgling GTF with its state-of-the-art features caught Mitsubishi's eye. It's worth noting that this was a bold move. At the time, this engine was an avant-garde choice. Now it powers big names like the A320neo and E-Jet E2. Mitsubishi envisioned a grand timeline. Certification by 2012 and the birds taken to the skies by 2013. Their goal? Capturing a whopping 20% of the 70 to 90 seater market within two decades. Given that the market forecast was around 5,000 jets, Mitsubishi's aim for 1,000 of those felt not just ambitious, but a statement of intent. While the plans shimmered with promise, reality was a little less glittery. Imagine envisioning a sleek, modern mansion, only to realize you don't know the first thing about building with glass. That was Mitsubishi with composites. As grand as the idea of an almost entirely composite airframe sounded, the execution faltered. Perhaps it was hubris or just a miscalculation. But Mitsubishi bit off a tad more than they could chew. Sure, surmounting this challenge was possible, but the resultant MRJ would have a price tag more fitting for a spaceship. While the lighter weight and enhanced aerodynamics shimmered tantalizingly in the distance, the question arose. Would these marginal gains really be worth the skyrocketing costs for an MRJ-sized aircraft? In the end, Mitsubishi dialed back their futuristic vision, reserving the carbon and fiberglass for the tail, control surfaces and engine enclosures, roughly 12-15% to of the jet. The rest? Trusty, tried and tested aluminium. The revolutionary dream had to be shelved, with the MRJ settling into familiar territory. But it wasn't all gloom. Mitsubishi did tinker with the fuselage, blessing the cabin with some additional room. With a height of 202 centimeters, 6 foot 8 inches, and width of 2.76 meters, 9 foot 1 inch, the MRJ cabin nudged ahead of the Embraer E-Jet by a whole 2 centimeters. It might sound small, but in the world of aviation, that's a victory lap. In the grand mosaic of aircraft design, changing one tile often means re-evaluating the whole picture. As Mitsubishi tinkered with the MRJ's elements, a glaring revelation emerged. Their mystery gap wasn't confined to just composites. The might of Japan's industrial machinery had, unfortunately, painted a deceptive picture of invincibility. Picture Mitsubishi as a culinary prodigy, skillful at recreating dishes but having never created a recipe from scratch. Sure, they'd whipped up impressive aircraft, but always following someone else's recipe. Even their role in crafting the wing for Boeing 787 was akin to baking a cake using a preset mix. Remarkable, but not wholly original. This aviation titan, boasting unparalleled manufacturing prowess, suddenly confronted a humbling truth. They were navigating uncharted waters. Think of it this way, the world's finest heart surgeon might be utterly bamboozled by a toothache. With challenges abounding, Mitsubishi became a diligent student learning mid-journey, reiterating designs, and enlisting experts from every corner of the globe. But, as with all lessons, they came at a cost. Escalated complexities, swelling budgets, and a constantly moving finish line. Assembly of their maiden prototype, envisioned for earlier dates, only took off in 2011 and spanned several years. And for those eagerly waiting in line, dreaming of their brand new MRJ, well, patience would need to stretch till 2017. A stark reminder that crafting marvels, especially in aviation, is often a game of patience and perseverance. 2014. A glint of optimism emerged with the airliner's vibrant rollout ceremony at Nagoya's Komaki Airport. This location was not just any airstrip. It was where Mitsubishi once crafted the iconic A6M Zero fighter. Fast forward to November 2015, and the MRJ-90 prototype took its inaugural flight. But here's where the plot thickens. Due to Japan's airways being as jam-packed as a Tokyo subway during rush hour, the MRJ-90 had to pack its bags and head to the spacious skies of the USA for testing. But, as fate would have it, even in the land of the free, old challenges haunted them. Test flights unveiled a Pandora's box of issues, pushing the finish line further and further away. With the initial promise of a 2017 debut slowly fading, insiders started betting on 2020. And as the calendar pages turned, the project's budget swelled beyond $3 billion. But the shifting sands didn't sit well with the clientele. The initial wave of excitement ebbed, giving way to doubts and contract re-evaluations. Enter the Mitsubishi marketing magicians with a classic move, rebranding. 
In 2019, out went the MRJ and in soared the space jet. The MRJ-90 morphed into the M90, a simple name switch. But the MRJ-70, rechristened the M100, underwent more than a name makeover. It got a spacious upgrade, revamped designs and tweaked specs. In its heyday, the MRJ project was the darling of the aviation world. Airlines worldwide eagerly inked deals, and order books swelled to an impressive 400 aircraft. This promising jet had fans from Tokyo to Texas, but as the journey unfolded, the narrative became as intricate as a thriller novel. Dive into the bustling world of US regional air transportation, the grand arena where mammoth jetliners rule the skies. While this market is the heavyweight champion globally, it comes with its own set of intricate nuances. Picture this, airports so sophisticated they seem straight out of the future, and regional airlines often nestling under the wings of aviation giants like Delta, United and American Airlines. Now, here's the twist. A complex dance between regional and mainline transportation that sparked an intriguing crew conflict. Why? The paycheck one takes home isn't the same across the board. Enter the Grand Mediator, the Scope Clause, an agreement between airlines and unions. This clause, a virtual referee, determines the rules of the game. Notably, it's here we find the magic numbers, 76 seats and 39 tons. Anything beyond this and you're treading on thin ice. This sets the stage for the MRJ's intricate ballet. In the early 2000s, the Japanese, with an eye for both American and global appetites, initiated a project to produce aircraft with a seating range of 70 to 90. But as with any epic tale, the winds of change blew across the industry. Airlines, chasing better economies, began craving larger planes, housing more than 100 passengers. The MRJ-90, once a promising contender, now seemed like an undersized player in this evolving game. Imagine trying to stretch it further, akin to molding a 40 meter long sausage. Meanwhile, in the US, the MRJ-90 found itself dancing on the edge, too large for local tastes due to union constraints. Its sibling, the MRJ-70, designed especially for the US palate, was sidelined amidst these industry upheavals. Flashback to 2007 in Paris, when this entire venture was announced, the aircraft was the toast of the town, a symbol of futuristic prowess. Amidst its conception, competitors revved their engines, unveiling models like the E-Jet E2 and A220. Suddenly, the MRJ didn't gleam as the futuristic marvel it once promised. Many potential buyers, tired of the perpetual waiting game, shifted allegiance to competitors. As the 2020s dawned, the MRJ was buried under a mountain of issues, strategic missteps, and an embarrassing track record of delays. Then came a global upset nobody had on their radar, the pandemic. It rattled the aviation industry's foundations, making an already precarious MRJ future waver even more. The stage was set for some tough calls. By May 2020, Mitsubishi started tightening its belt, slashing budgets and workforce numbers. Outside Japan, its wings were clipped, flight tests halted, planes were called back to Nagoya, and soon after, some met their demise in scrapyards. By 2023, hope dwindled to zero as Mitsubishi Heavy Industries rang the death knell for the space jet program. And there it was, Japan, a beacon of technological prowess, couldn't berth its own commercial airliner. It's tempting to jest, but one must remember, technology isn't a magical wand granting success everywhere. Just because one excels in certain domains doesn't guarantee an easy flight in others, especially in the intricate world of aviation. At the heart of MRJ's struggles, Mitsubishi bit off more than they could chew, both technically and strategically. Even if they'd rolled the plane off the production line, there was no guarantee of smooth skies ahead, especially in the stormy domain of regional transportation. Interestingly, the MRJ wasn't alone in its woes. Its rivals, like the E-Jet E2 and SSJ-100, faced turbulence while the Airbus A220 only soared after a rescue from its initial identity crisis as the Bombardier C-Series. The MRJ's downfall isn't the curtain call for Japan's civil aircraft ambitions. Blame sits with Mitsubishi and certain policymakers. But don't forget the Honda jet, birthed by Honda's savvy moves, is flying high as a commendable business jet. In essence, Mitsubishi took a bold leap, encountered turbulence, and walked away wiser.
Whether this wisdom, acquired over 15 years and billions of dollars, is a worthwhile trade-off remains debatable. But who knows, we might yet witness Japan's phoenix rise in the aviation industry. Here's hoping it won't be a half-century wait.